Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with another episode of Comics Were Better. Of course, we all know, even though there are good books out there, for some reason, modern-day Marvel, modern-day DC, and even some independents, they just feel wrong for some reason. It just doesn't, doesn't feel like it used to. So I figure, you know what, let's check it out. Let's count down 10 comic book characters, comic book series, and just events that prove that comic books were better in the 1930s. So without further ado, let's get this party started. Number 10, Detective Comics. And no, I am not talking about the f number 27. We're talking about the first 26. And yeah, I understand there's a little bit uh, of a controversy for this. But let me let me tell you. Yeah, if you could take everything in, in, with a grain of salt, understand that it is a time period that people were not as sensitive as uh, they are now. But you got some great characters. Ching Lung from the first issue. Yeah, I'm talking about that guy. Joel, uh, Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel had another character called Slam Bradley. He was pretty cool. You have the Crimson Avenger, one of the first costume crime fighters, making his uh, debut in number 20. Some really good stuff here. This is the first of DC Comics as well. They were called uh, National Allied Publications before this, as a matter of fact. So this is where it all began, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you got some great pre-code detective stories as well, so I highly recommend you check this out, if only for the historical significance. Number nine, Wesley Dodd Sandman. He made his first appearance in New York's World Fair Comics. I mean, what the freaking hell is a New York's World's Fair comics? It is actually a precursor to World's Finest. Anyway, look at this guy. He's in a business suit. He's wearing a fedora and a gas mask, and it looks awesome. And a cape. Can't get rid of that cape, but he's one of the most awesome characters ever to grace a cover. I swear to gosh, I love the adventure comics. I'm, I, I'm a big fan of his Golden Age comics. I do have to admit that I'm also a real big fan of Sam and Mystery Theater. Um, but either way, this the, he got his debut in the 1930s. Absolutely a great character that if you have not delved into, if you had not found this character yet, please do yourself a favor and check out The Old Adventures of Sandman. Number 8. The Phantom. The Ghost Who Walks. Okay, yes, I am cheating a little bit because The Phantom started off in 1936, created by Lee Falk in the comic strips, and didn't really show up in comic books until 1940s, and those were reprints of the comic strips for a while before he started doing original comic book content. Now, there's a lot that Batman owes to The Phantom. At first, Lee Falk was going to have him in the city, but he moved him to the jungle, but he was still a rich playboy by day, crime fighter by night, he has a servant, his dog sidekick, all sorts of stuff like that, and gadgets the whole nine yards. Um, one of the things I really like, and I love sharing this little piece of trivia because it inspired so many superheroes after him, is that Lee Falk liked Greek bust statues that didn't have any pupils, so that's why he erased them from the Phantom himself. Anyway, it's a great character. If you haven't read anything about him or any of his adventures, do yourself a favor, check it out, and even check out the movie. It's got Billy Zane and Treat Williams. What else can you ask for? Number seven, The Lone Ranger. And yes, I'm cheating a couple of ways. One, he showed up first in a radio show in 1933 written by a gentleman named uh, Ferran Stryker. And the other one is... His comic books really didn't show up during the 1930s. However, his big little books did, and they're almost like comic books. I loved these things as a kid. This is where I actually learned about the Lone Ranger, but even before I saw him uh, uh, being played by Clayton Moore on Saturday TV. Yeah, they used to show Lone Ranger reruns, and I kind of dug them. They were pretty cool. Definitely a lot of fun. If you can find the comic books, if you can find uh, the TV show, absolutely check this out and if you can find the big little books sell them on ebay and you will make a fortune actually i don't know i haven't checked that out however i would love to find a collection again these were my childhood right here kids number six dick tracy created by chester ghoul in 1931 and no i'm not cheating this time because he made his comic book appearance in popular comics in the 30s as well now i gotta admit i didn't acquire a taste for dick until 1990s now i experimented with dick definitely before that but it was really the movie that kind of got me into the gladstone books and i really just delved and just devoured all the dick i can get and everything that dick had to rub against just made it a lot harder to put the dick down and I also appreciated the different ways you could get Dick. 
I mean, granted, there's all sorts of uh, comic strips and everything if you like the short dick, but they also had long-form stories if you preferred your dick a little bit bigger. I, myself, I'll take it any way I can get it. Either way, Dick Tracy is one of the better comic book creations ever, in my opinion, and I highly recommend you check out his adventures. Whether you like Dick or not, you'll enjoy this. Number five. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The Shadow Knows. This is another hero that Bill Finger and Bob Kane would use as inspiration for Batman. And I think part of it is when you're looking at the shadow, you're looking at somebody who, while they're fighting crime, they're also dealing with their own darkness. Now, he's created in 1931 for radio. He was a narrator for the Detective Story Hour, which took uh, stories from Detective Story magazine until they decided, hey, let's just get some straight-up shadow stories. And they started writing it under the name of uh, Max Grant with the pretense that it was the shadow telling the stories to him. So he's got a bit of a history. Uh, definitely check it out if you can. I highly recommend uh, his modern-day stories as well. They're pretty good. And that movie with Alec Baldwin, surprise, surprise, was a lot of fun. Number four. Conan the Barbarian or Conan the Sumerian. And yes, I am cheating on this one too, since he wasn't actually in comic books until 1970, ladies and gentlemen. So he may show up there as well. But he was created in 1932 by Robert E. Howard and published in a, in a magazine called Weird Tales. And if you look at the cover, holy crap, he does not look like what we picture him as, does he? Conan is one of those characters where it's just hard to remember that he's been around for dang near, what is it, 90 years now? Almost 90 years. Think about that. And he's still going strong. The, even though it's a low bar these days, Conan the, the Barbarian and Savage Sword of Conan are two of the best books that Marvel's putting out. And on a consistent basis, too. They haven't had a bad issue yet. And uh, if you haven't done it already, check out some of the older stories. Check out the 1970s version and definitely check out the modern day version of Conan. You will not be disappointed. Number three, Marvel Comics number one at a time when they were called timely. Actually, Marvel didn't show up until the 60s, but Human Torch, you got that character going on. You've got another character that de debuted in the same one called the Angel, which is a decent character, but kind of got buried by history and that's understandable. It's a decent golden age book. That still has some Golden Age silliness, but you get the first appearance of the Submariner, and that's a decent story. I like that story. It's very well written. And, of course, you got some that just never made famous. Yeah, Jungle Terror. No, thank you. We'll take Kazar instead, or Kazar, depending on how you pronounce it. But, uh, once again, it's a thoroughly enjoyable book. They put out the 80th anniversary. This is where I got these pages from. Check it out, at least for the cultural impact that it's had. Number two, The Batman. And you know what? I'm not under any contractual obligation to say it any way other than this, but created by Bill Finger and Bob Kane. Thank you very much. Uh, and I say that because a lot of the stuff that we, can, we, we attribute to Batman came from the mind of Bill Finger. Uh, amazing character, obviously. This is weird talking about something that everybody knows about, but here you go. I believe that Batman is one of the most versatile characters who has been and can be in damn near every kind of story you want. And we even discovered even a parody superhero TV show. He can be whatever you want him to be and has been exactly that through the, what is it now, 80 years of his publication history. Absolutely one of, if not my favorite character in comic books of all time. And number one, comic book or comic book character in this case that could prove that the 1930s were better than modern day comics is possibly the one of the few characters that could give Batman a run for his money is my favorite character of all time, and that is Superman. Okay, of course we all know he deb debuted in Action Comics number one and still going strong 80 years later. Here is the reason why, and this is once again... Weird to talk about something that everybody knows about, so here is my reasons why I think Superman really stands the test of time and really should be number one on this list. I mean, other than starting the superhero, uh, the, the superhero genre off, the character himself has evolved to 
such great lengths to such an incredible hero. And one of the things that is inspiring the most, and this is one of the reasons I love uh, Superman, is he's the most inspiring hero of the DC Universe. Same reason why I love Captain America over at Marvel. And the reason he is that is because he's got the powers of the gods. And instead of taking over, he makes sure that he does the right thing all of the time. Sometimes falters at it even. But he'll admit it and he'll learn from mistake, mistakes and he'll try to do better. So there you go, gang. That is my 10 reasons comic books were better in the 1930s. What do you think? Did I leave something off or... If so, let me know in the comments below. What did I put on where you're like, oh, I don't know about that one. Or maybe one of the ones I cheated on. I should wait until I actually get to their year where their comic books debuted. I can understand that. Let me know all of this in the comments below. Don't forget to click like if you like this. YouTube is not sharing my videos anymore and the views have tanked. So by all means... Uh, Please share this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Make sure your notifications are on, of course. And if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Ko-Fi or to Patreon and drop a dollar in the till. Help support the channel that way. And even on Ko-Fi, you can commission your own video. 